um, I name this patch analysis um, because like um, I'm just focusing on a certain patch, which is like some more gray matter um, column, like very small volume of the gray matter. And uh, I'm gonna talk about, I have, by the way, like six, seven slides. So it's gonna be like 10 minutes, maybe 15. Um, I am um, thinking about um, why we don't do much about dynamic uh, instantaneous CBV profiles. Um, most of the layer analysis by now is done by having a seed region and having a, um, another region and correlating that and then looking for layer by layer how much the correlation holds and then you extract a layer profile. It's actually a correlation by layers. Or um, you have a GLM model and then you have beta values distributed over layers, you look at that. But um, one can look at the ongoing CDU profiles and then I would like to show it uh, like this, uh, kind of a 3D map. Um, and you see like different volumes on the top and has different profiles. And you see like it's a ocean of profiles changing in time. So there's like number of volumes in this case, like uh, 10 minutes of scan TR is about uh, 3.5 and it's um, person change of CBV and the cortical depth. So you can appreciate that the formation is very dynamic and it's time to time. Uh, it's like uh, center um, mid layers dominated, sometimes upper, sometimes lower. So I, uh, the upcoming four or five slides, I'm talking about like how we can quantify this and take benefit of this information. And we're looking at um, the resting state here, are we? Uh, this is uh, actually a vibrotectile data set that I got from Giagia. So it is actually a uh, finger acetamylated. I'll come to that. So it is like a first finger, index finger. And uh, yeah, and then different time points we are looking at. So let's say, uh, assuming like we are looking for feed forward and feedback. So we are looking basically a template, kind of trying to match when it is happening there. Uh, we can extract like uh, time courses based on that and similarity time courses in, the, in this case. Uh, if, if it is like more centered, if we can say feed forward, I don't know if it is uh, if it makes sense if, uh, because in this case there is no seed region, so it is only itself the region itself. So it's maybe we can say uh, mid layer dominant instead of feed forward, but in this case just don't <laughs> pay attention much on the naming. And um, if there is like a separation in between like upper lower like double hump kind of feedback time course, and you get two different features for a given patch. And you can use it as a regressor and you can compare this with other regions, for example. Um, one can do the other approach is like k-min clustering. So every time point is a, a form of a, a profile and it's changing. So you, you just feed the, this to the k-means, let's say three clusters. And then you have, uh, if, you if you choose the uh, classification parameters as a correlation, you will probably end up like this middle, deeper, and upper. And then uh, you can see what time, um, when is middle dominant, when is upper, and when is lower. One can even look at like um, upper and middle, the transitions, um, although it looks noisy at some point, but um, the, the transitions in between, and then you can even quantify how open it is happening. So like, you you can see like it there's a lot of middle but uh it's it's not much happening uh, if you change the patch it, it might happen more often which clearly indicates there's much going on there um here marked a uh, few task events uh that is like finger is uh stimulated um at this point i can't say if it is uh, matching with the uh this profiles but the five uh, stimulation points looks like uh, overlapping with the middle and uh, with some delay in, in the case and 
sometimes instant, instant, instantaneously. Um, but yeah, at, at this point, I, I can't say if they're like task related, but it looks like most of them are matching with the um, simulated part. Um, of course, like one can do massive analysis, like you have thousands and tens of thousands of patches, and then you can extract for each of them like feed forward and feed, uh, feedback time courses. In this case, this is the whole brain data set. The previous one was the slab. Um, so this one has the whole brain coverage. So you have massive time courses of feed forward and feedback. Uh, the first thing came to my mind, okay, if there's a global modulation. So what we can look at is uh, just sum it up. If there's a common mode of this feed forward time courses and we see certain stripes, actually few of you would know if, if you work on this data set, these are the um, rest time points, a <laughs> black screen. So, so clearly there's a global modulation that going on there. And that is a little less on the feedback. The stripes are more clear on the feed forward. It might be because of the shape, it's kind of a, a gray matter, like more center oriented. It's more selective to gray matter. But yeah. Um, I have one more. Yeah, one can also do k-means on this, and then you get like centroids, which are like identifying the main drivers of the feed-forward regressors in the brain. So you have like this is movie watching data, and then you have ten centroids. And what I did was um, I just look at this individually, used as a regressor, and then see what happens in the in the uh, in the brain, and I will switch to this one because I haven't prepared those. Oops, hope it will work. Maybe that was not a good idea. You guys seeing black screen, I guess, right? Dark, yeah, blue, screen. Screen. dark blue, dark blue screen. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, okay, this two screen problem. Now I need to minimize it. I will show like 10 main maps that is um, interesting. Okay, there we go. All right, I will cruise through volumes. Um, so what I expect is to see some cortical activations too and subcortical too. So this one clearly like two spots, symmetrical, uh, lower ventral stream, uh, maybe fusiform even lower. So wait, um, now we are looking at the time courses that you got from the k-means as defined by a um, driver for feed forward or feedback. Like you don't have layers defined outside the brain. Or, or could you remind me? No, um, the regressors I extracted feed forward, 10 of them, 10 main of them. And then I, I just move back to raw data. So I use them as a regressor and then correlate on the ways of data. Oh, cool. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So like no layers at all now. It's <laughs> just the regressors back to the data. But the regressors have been defined based on the layer signature, which is used for of the course. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. 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 So like this is the first one. Um, I haven't checked the movie uh, labels. 
um, but looks like it's a fusiform and some subcortical activation there. Um, few of them are noisy, but a lot of visual, even like visual separations, like uh, positive, negative. It was a very interesting one, um, kind of uh, hippocampus amygdala and like um, superior, uh, I don't know, dorsal screen maybe. Visual. And yeah, another one. This one could be attention, maybe a supratemporal gyrus and uh, uh, DLPFC. If if it's not too superior, maybe a little little superior for that. Maybe here is DLPFC. But yeah, I'm at the stage of investigating this. Um, looks like almost all regressors that is um, driven by this method looks like a meaningful correlation when you go back to data. And um, there's like positives and negatives. Um, I'm not sure if the, um, maybe I, I switch back to, um, this is not convenient. So one drawback in this method is I uh, artificially introduced these shapes. And based on these shapes, I created some, um, uh, some uh, regressors, some time courses. And based on that, I, I did some analysis. Looks like it is partially working, promising. But um, what do you think? I mean, that will be my question. Like. Um, this is, we cannot say this is feed forward feedback, but you know, just the middle layer dominated uh, signal regression maybe. Uh, but looks like most of them uh, has a, a very meaningful uh, correlation patterns. So they might be meaningful. And I'm personally not really afraid of kind of the arbitrariness of kind of the U shape, mm -hmm. the inverted U shape, because it is kind of the Fellerman van Essen model of feed forward and feedback, which is not the best model. And it's in like an oversimplification, but it's kind of the best model that we have for that spatial scale that, that we can tap into. So I wouldn't call it arbitrary. It's a model and then all models are wrong when some are useful or what they say. I'm yeah, but in the end, like you, you can, choose like the center bin very high, size very low. I mean, the shape, it could be like, you know, leptocuritic, mesocuritic, a little bit. <laughs> Based on that, you can get more smoother, more sharper transitions. Um, yeah, I mean, there one can work on state transitions maybe even uh, if it is not noisy. I haven't done any time course um, filtering. Um, I noticed that, um, in some patches, um, there might be very jumpy points. Apparently, um, every three seconds, I don't know you, if you expect to have see CBV oscillations that fast. Um, so based on physiology, this analysis might be improved, um, certain filters, certain locations, and, and the activation the profile change might not be happening or might happen very quickly, not like six, seven seconds later than the uh, onset might happen very quickly too in this case, because we are looking at very local uh, bin activation, very, very tiny voxels and their um, uh, CBV changes. 